I'm Peter Werrick, and this is Jenny Johnson. Together from this screen up here, we're going to try and teach you how to ride a motorcycle. And that's pretty difficult, so it's largely just a matter of tips. Riding a motorbike is so much different to driving any other sort of motor vehicle, and somewhere like this is the best place to learn. A thin pair of leather gloves is a good idea, and some sort of eye protection, not glass, which uh, will protect your eyes because you can't ride if you can't see. And while we're on the subject of seeing, a peak to cut the glare a bit. What you need is a comfortable, approved helmet, clothing at least as thick as denim, and a good pair of shoes or boots that'll protect your ankles and feet. Make sure you learn on a bike that you can physically handle. And incidentally, when you sit on the bike, your feet should touch the ground. Now, a good test is to see if you can push the bike around in a figure eight. That's not all there is to it, incidentally. There's a heck of a lot more yet, but it's a good starting point, and it indicates that at least you will be physically capable of riding the bike. I don't think anybody should start to learn to ride a bike over 250, because these bikes weigh about 115 kilograms, whereas the smaller capacity bikes are a lot lighter. If you do start to ride a bike over 250, it becomes very difficult to manage and most of your attention is spent on trying to manoeuvre the weight of the bike rather than trying to master the controls. Every bike's technically different and there are hundreds of different ones manufactured, but most of the basic procedures are the same. Now let's start here with our thumbs underneath the handlebars. Arms slightly bent and then adjust your sitting position by leaning your back slightly forward. Your knees should be comfortably resting against the side of the petrol tank. Your heels should be firmly pressed on the foot peg with your feet slightly down and slightly out. These are the six major controls. The clutch lever, the twist grip throttle, the front brake lever, the rear brake pedal, the gear shift lever, the kick start lever, and on some bikes, an electric start. Now, as well, there are the things which we call the accessories. The ignition switch, the fuel flow valve, lights on, high and low beam, right and left indicator light, and horn. Now, all of these things should be second nature to you as soon as they possibly can be. It's worth practicing, being able to feel for them, reach for them, pick them up without looking for them. Your eyes are supposed to be straight ahead. Balancing is the key to starting the bike easy with the kickstart, just as it's the key to hopping on and off. You've got to find just the right angle so you can balance the bike easily on one leg. Lean from one side to the other, just to get used to this feeling. If you feel as though the bike's rolling forward or starting to roll backwards, just apply the front brake. This is how you start it. Turn the ignition on. Turn the petrol on. Check the gear shift to make sure your bike's in neutral and there's also a green light up here which you can make sure. Slightly lean the bike to the left on your left foot for balance. Push the kick starter down with the weight of your whole body, not just with the shorter part of your leg but with the whole body. Hold it down until you feel the motor is running continuously. You can tell by the sound of the motor that the bike is idling at a good speed and it's best just to give it a few revs just to get the feel and the sound of the throttle. Well now, it's easy for me to get a start because I've got an electric start. And away we go. Once you've mastered the use of all the controls, the next thing to do is to move off. Pull in the clutch, pick up first gear, and then before you actually go anywhere, just get the feel of the friction point. It's only a matter of just moving a couple of feet, that's all. Clutch moves a certain distance and then it begins to bite and engage. Once you've felt that, let it out, take up the slack and just start to move away. Once you start moving, continue to let the clutch out fairly gently and just move along nice, getting your balance until you're ready to try it again. When you want to stop, pull in the clutch, pull on the brake, stop. Now don't worry if your bike jumps or stalls when you first start using the clutch. Ease the clutch out to friction point. It's not that hard, really. You've got to get used to it, and it takes a fair bit of practice. But if you're a bit worried about it and there's somebody handy, just get them to run along behind you to steady you up. The gearbox is 
designed to give you a range of acceptable road speeds without necessarily putting any loads or stress on the engine by revving it excessively. In its mechanism, the way it functions, it's terribly simple. Just a click with your toe for up and a click down for going down through the gears. Significantly though, you must, with a motorcycle gearbox, go all the way down through the gears to get back to first gear. Now, in the lower gears particularly, the acceleration in most motorcycles is pretty brisk and it's worthwhile while you're practicing to take a bit of care with it. So, when you begin to accelerate, just bring on the power nice and steady. And then when you're ready to go, using the clutch as smoothly as you can, come up. Second. Third. To fourth. If you like. To fifth. To go back down again, it's quite necessary to slightly rev the engine. So, going down again, just to match them all up. Four, three, two, and that's low enough, because otherwise we'll be going too slowly. Now, once you've got plenty of practice at that, and you've started to get things all working for you, your next step is to move your location, because you'll need some bitumen to practice some cornering. Once you've found yourself a place to practice, Describe a figure eight, and remember that a figure eight is nothing more than two short straights linking two corners. And that's going to help you to learn cornering and balance and stability. And while you're out there, lay the bike into the corner on the trailing throttle with the throttle right off. And then progressively bring the power back on again, and you'll have to lean a little more as you do to maintain your chosen line with the power on as the cycle leaves the corner. Just like Jenny's doing now, in fact. Once you've got to the stage of being reasonably proficient at the conventional type of turn, perhaps the opportunity might be really ideal for you to have a go at a different type of turn. In this case, the swerve, the evade, the recover situation that you're going to be involved with. most important things you'll ever learn is how to stop and how to stop fast. And don't kid yourself that you'll never need emergency braking. No matter how careful a rider you are, someday, somewhere, you'll need to stop really hard. On a motorcycle, there's a balance between front and rear brakes, which act independently of one another. And it's going to be necessary for you to find a very high degree of physical sensitivity to the feel of those two brakes. Foot for the rear brake, hand for the front brake. Don't be afraid to use the front brake. Certainly, it's the most effective brake on the bike. It's also potentially the most dangerous, but it's the one that's going to give you the best stopping action. But use it in conjunction with the back brake. The technique of emergency braking, quite simply, is to try to avoid bashing either of those brakes. Squeeze them. Squeeze them hard, squeeze them effectively, 
develop the balance between the two as you go, work up slowly and progressively from slow speeds to fast speeds, and as you go, squeeze each brake harder, and you'll find, by pure physical sensitivity, that there is a point at which the wheels will lock. Stop your maximum effort braking just before they do. And if they should happen to lock, a rear wheel lock-up is not such a bad thing, but a front wheel lock-up is potentially quite dangerous because there's no recoverable action, and that's why it's worth the practice. Well, we're just about at the end of our time. But by now, you should be just about ready to take to the public roads anyway. When you do, stick to roads you know reasonably well, in your own locality, the ones that you know the pitfalls about. Keep it in your mind that somewhere near 80% of first-year riders crashed last year. Now, the reason for that is pretty simple. There's a, not a very good relationship between motorcar drivers and motorcyclists, and very largely that seems to be due to the fact that motorcar drivers are just not aware of your existence. What do you think, Jenny? Yeah, Pete, I entirely agree with you. I think the most important thing is to wear bright clothing, keep your headlight on all the time, and don't forget, don't depend on other people's decisions.